Hi, I'm Joe Landry, and this is a presentation about the history of Franklin, decade by decade. In this video, we'll look back at the 1960s and explore the events that happened during that time period. The sources of information that will be discussed in this presentation were taken from such places as the Franklin Register, which was the town's first newspaper, and the Franklin Sentinel, which replaced it. The pictures were taken from the Stanley Chilson collection and the Sanborn fire insurance maps, as well as my own personal pictures and postcards. In addition, I would like to give a special word of thanks to Rebecca Finnegan and the staff at the Franklin Historical Museum for their assistance. The Franklin Historical Museum's website is shown here, where you will find links to Facebook and Instagram. The Franklin Police Station In January of 1960, a meeting of the Franklin Board of Selectmen took place in order to discuss the construction of a new police station on East Street, where the American Legion Hall was located. Up until this time, the police station was located underneath the Morse Theater. However, the space was getting cramped and a new building was needed. A proposal by the members of the American Legion was made to move the Legion Hall to the land where the former Nason Street School was located but no final action would be taken until a town meeting could be held. The members of the American Legion had looked into the cost of moving the, vehicle, the building, and it was estimated to be $7,000. This would include moving the building, setting it on a new foundation, and making the necessary utility connections. At a previous meeting of the selectmen, it had been recommended that the new police station be built in front of the Legion Hall without disturbing the hall, but no further action was taken at that time. In March of 1962, a proposal was made to add a police station to the left of the existing fire station. A general town meeting was held to discuss the proposal, and at that meeting, the proposal was rejected. In May of 1962, the newly appointed Police Building Survey Committee met and decided to offer two plans for voter consideration. One plan called for a new police station as an addition to the fire station, and the second plan was to build a freestanding building at the site of the Legion Hall. In August of 1963, the voters of Franklin approved the construction of a new police station on East Street where the Legion Hall was located. Demolition of the hall would begin soon thereafter. This is a video of the American Legion Hall being demolished. It was formerly a schoolhouse before it became the GAR Hall. Here is the Franklin Police Station as it was completed on that site. It has since been demolished and replaced with a new police station on Panther Way, which is next to the location of the former town pool. The W.K. Gilmore Property In May of 1960, Max Gorelick purchased the Gilmore property on Depot Street for $40,000. The land and buildings on this site had gone up for sale after the W.K. Gilmore Company had closed its hay, grain, and coal business. Mr. Gorelick did not say at the time what he had planned to do with the property. When the property first went up for sale, it had been considered to be a good location for a public parking lot, but the price tag was considered to be too high, and there was some question as to the bounds of the property. At a town meeting in August of 1963, the off-street parking lot on the former Gilmore property was given approval by the voters of Franklin. Max Gorelick then sold the property to the town of Franklin so that the parking lot could be constructed. St. Mary's Parochial School In September of 1960, 
ground was broken for an eight-room addition to St. Mary's Parochial School on Main Street, which would double the size of the school. It was expected that the new addition would be ready by the start of the school year in September of 1961. Franklin High School In November of 1960, approval was given for a new high school to be constructed on Oak Street. It would replace the Davis Thayer High School on West Central Street. Here is a video of the laying of the cornerstone. A new shopping center on East Central Street. In November of 1960, a special town meeting was held to discuss a new shopping center at the site of the Indian Rock Park property on East Central Street. Oral agreements had been made with a variety chain store, a supermarket, and a promotional type department store. The planning board was assured that the shopping center would not have an adverse effect on the downtown area but would tend to make the town more of a shopping hub. In July of 1961, groundbreaking ceremonies were held for the new shopping center. This shopping center would be designed to accommodate 11 stores, including a new Brunelli Star Market, as well as a nationally known large varieties chain called Shoppers Fair. Other stores that would be housed in the center included a bakery and a donut shop, a shoe store, a savings institution, a barber shop, a dress shop, a gift shop, a hardware store, a drug store, and a jewelry store. The Brunelli Star Market. In June of 1961, Stephen Mugar, the president of Star Market Company, a New England supermarket chain, announced that an agreement had been reached for the acquisition of the three stores in the Brunelli chain of markets. Those stores were in Franklin, Milford, and Blackstone, Massachusetts. The chain, which was founded in 1954 by John Brunelli, would be operated as a division of Star Market, with Mr. Brunelli in charge. Here is a video showing the construction of the plaza. This video shows the demolition of the house that was near the Horace Mann Memorial. This video shows the ribbon cutting ceremony of the new Brunelli Star Market.
the Pazzini Funeral Home. In March of 1961, Edward Mulvaney, who had owned the Keefe Funeral Home for the previous 16 years, sold his business and property on Cottage Street to Fred Pazzini, Jr. of Hialeah, Florida. Mr. Pazzini had previously been associated with the Carl Slade Funeral Home in that city. Urban Renewal In April of 1961, Urban Renewal was discussed at a meeting at Town Hall, as well as the creation of a redevelopment authority. At that meeting, the members of the Board of Selectmen received a briefing on the subject. Here is an artist drawing of the downtown area of Franklin. It showed what the downtown area would look like after urban renewal was completed. As the drawing shows, many of the downtown buildings would be torn down and replaced with new ones. In December of 1963, the selectmen held their weekly meeting to discuss urban renewal. Chairman George Woods Jr. said that under the program, a house-to-house -house survey of dilapidated houses would have to be made during the next few years. The work would be done under the supervision of the planning board and would be done in sections. In February of 1965, a group of about 400 people met at the high school to discuss the urban renewal proposal. The meeting was described as being very lively, with State Representative Paul Cataldo needing to gavel the session back to order many times. The crowd was reminded that voters had set up a committee to carry out the project through the planning stages and that it would provide the community with a broader tax base and would be carried out with no disruption of business operations in the commercial district. The project was also met with opposition. A concern was voiced where the town would be better served by spending money on a new reservoir to help serve the growing population and to attract industry and new schools. One person suggested that Franklin's merchants were facing problems because they couldn't compete with the lower prices available to shoppers elsewhere, and that if they couldn't be competitive, they wouldn't be able to attract more business no matter how much renewal work would take place. In March of 1965, a town meeting was to be held so that the voters of Franklin could vote on the project. The margin of voting was 595 to 546. Since there wasn't a two-thirds majority, another vote would be taken at another meeting so that this could be achieved. Two months later, another vote was taken on the urban renewal project at a town meeting. And this time, the two-thirds majority was achieved and the urban renewal project was defeated. New Dean Academy Dormitories In April of 1961, work began on three new dormitories at Dean College on Emmett Street. Two of the dormitories would be for men, housing 90 students each, and the third one would be for women, housing 100 students. Franklin Paint Company. In May of 1961, the Franklin Paint Company bought the former Franklin Woolen Mill building on Cottage Street and moved their business to this location from its Grove Street facility in the former Whitney Worsted plant. The company was formed in 1946 and they specialized in traffic paint, which they sold to many states, towns, and cities throughout New England. Franklin Paint planned to occupy three floors of the main building, as well as the office building. The Mills Brothers Circus In August of 1962, the Mills Brothers Circus came to town. They set up their tent on East Central Street near Fico's Bolodrome. The elephants claimed the attention of the young, most of them seeing and even touching an elephant for the first time. In fact, one of the elephants made a surprise visit to another part of town that day.
Miss Lorraine Metcalf was able to borrow one of the elephants from the circus and have it brought to the town pool. Here she is, shown on the elephant, and bringing joy to all the kids there. I hope she doesn't yell roll over, or else she's going to have a big problem. Darlene's Donuts In October of 1961, Darlene's Donuts celebrated their first birthday with a big celebration. All donuts would be sold as baker's dozens, and everyone would get a second cup of coffee free of charge. Prizes would also be awarded. The Brookside Restaurant In November of 1961, the Brookside Restaurant began doing business on West Central Street at the corner of the gravel road leading to the town pool. Today, that gravel road is Panther Way. Here is an ad that appeared in the March 5th, 1964 Franklin Sentinel. First National Store Plaza. This is the area on West Central Street where the First National Plaza was being constructed. Dial telephone service begins in Franklin. In December of 1961, telephone dial service went into effect in Franklin. Up until then, if you wanted to make a phone call, you would pick up the receiver and the operator would ask you for the number that you were calling and she would make the connection for you. The new exchange was located in the 617 area code, as there were only two area codes in Massachusetts back then. The other area code was 413 in the western part of Massachusetts. Both Franklin and Norfolk would use the exchange number 528, unlike surrounding towns, which use special phrases for their telephone exchanges. Here are some examples. In Rentham, they used Evergreen. In Walpole, they used Montrose. Medway used Keystone. Foxborough had Kingswood. North Attleboro, Myrtle. And Millis used Frontier. In later years, those phrases were dropped and the exchanges reverted to using three numbers. The first two numbers would coincide with the first two letters in the phrase. For example, the exchange in a phone number for Rentham had been referred to as Evergreen 4. When the phrase Evergreen was dropped, the phone number was referred to as 384. The best example of a telephone from number from the 1940s that used a special phrase was the phone number that was made popular by Glenn Miller when he wrote the song Pennsylvania 6 5000. Vargin's Coin Operated Launderette In December of 1961, Archie Vargin opened a new coin operated launderette on Emmons Street near his existing store. The launderette had double load washers and dryers and plenty of free parking too. They were open 24 hours a day. The Sherwin-Williams Paint Store In March of 1961, Sherwin-Williams opened a paint store in the Ray Block on Main Street. This was in the same location where Ed Faber ran his hardware store for a number of years. The J.J. Newberry Store Expands In January of 1962, Chuck DeWitt, the manager of the J.J. Newberry Store, announced that he would expand his store into the vacant space where the W.T. Grant store had been located. This expansion would literally double the size of his store. The total cost of the renovation to the Newberry store was expected to exceed $40,000. As part of the expansion project, the old Sentinel building at the end of Depot Street and the exchange building near the bridge on Main Street would be demolished to make room for more parking.
One store that was in the exchange building was Martin's department store. When the decision was made to demolish the building, Mr. Levine placed an advertisement in the Franklin Sentinel announcing a huge sale. He eventually moved his store to the Morse block on East Central Street as seen in the picture. The Franklin Cinema Opens In October of 1963, work was progressing on the remodeling of the Morse Theater by the owner, Max Gorelick. He would rename the theater the Franklin Cinema. A few months later, the new Franklin Cinema opened and the first movie that was shown was The Prize with Paul Newman, Elkie Summer, and Edward G. Robinson. Valley Jewelers. In January of 1964, Bob Valley, who also taught French at Franklin High School, opened a new watch repairing store in the Ray Block on Main Street. This building was also the place where Dean Cooperative Bank was first established in 1889. In the early 1950s, Dean Cooperative Bank constructed a new building at the corner of Main Street and Emmons Street, as seen in this picture. By coincidence, Bob Valley would move his watch repairing and jewelry business into this building when Dean Cooperative Bank moved to their new facility on Main Street, which happened to be the same place where they had both started doing business. Quite a coincidence, wouldn't you say? But the story doesn't end there. When the Ray Block was about to be demolished in 1970, Bob took possession of the chime clock that had hung on the building for many years, and he carefully restored the clock so that it looked as good as it did when it was first installed on the Ray Block in 1916. When Dean Bank constructed their present building, as seen in the picture, Bob felt that it would be appropriate to offer it to the bank, as he felt that it was an important part of Franklin's history. The bank graciously accepted his offer, and they mounted the clock on a pedestal where it is prominently displayed in downtown Franklin once again. The Dean Science Center In July of 1965, an artist drawing of a new science center appeared in the Franklin Sentinel that would be built on Main Street near Dean Hall. The building would include two science lecture halls, a physics laboratory, three mathematics classrooms, a science library, and other laboratories. This science center would be named for Arthur W. Purse, the longtime headmaster of Dean Academy. The Rome Restaurant In November of 1965, the Kalachi family took possession of Kami's Restaurant on East Central Street and renamed it the Rome Restaurant. Kami's restaurant had been owned by Nunzio Bonino, who purchased it from the Brunelli family in the 1950s. In later years, the Rome restaurant was damaged by fire, and at that point, the owners decided to tear down all the buildings on the block and constructed a new restaurant, which is seen in the picture. St. John's Episcopal Church in April of 1966, St. John's Episcopal Church was dedicated on Pleasant Street. The church had moved here from School Street after they sold their church to Dean College, who turned it into a performance center. The new church was constructed with an education wing consisting of a meeting hall, a church office, and classrooms. Davida's Market in April of 1966, Joseph and Matt DeVita acquired Johnny's Grocery Store on East Central Street and renamed it DeVita's Market. It is still doing business in that location to this day. The Post Office Expansion In August of 1966, the expansion of the post office building was nearing completion. The project had been started in September of the previous year, and during that time, the post office did business in the gymnasium of the Masonic Hall on Emmons Street. The project doubled the post office in size, 
with many improvements being made, including a new pl loading platform, two equipment rooms, and an air conditioning. The Social Security Department would have its own office in the lower level of the building, and the draft board was considered for an office of their own, too. The Grace Universalist Church On Sunday, June 18, 1967, the final service was held in the Grace Universalist Church on Main Street before it was transferred to Dean Junior College, who had purchased the church. The following week, an auction was held to sell the furniture and other properties that were not transferable, together with pieces donated by members and friends. Proceeds of the auction were for equipping the new church building. Dean Junior College demolished the church and constructed a new library in this location. In August of 1967, a service was held at the site on Pleasant Street where the new Grace Universalist Church would be constructed. Roughly 50 people attended this service in the woodland clearing, which was carpeted with pine needles. The service was conducted by the Reverend John Daniel, who also accompanied the hymn singing with a banjo. He called on the Reverend Bruce Wyman, a faculty member of Dean Junior College, who was the chairman of the church building committee, who spoke briefly about the five acre site of the new church and the plans for building the new church. Benny's Oil Service. In July of 1967, Franklin Petroleum Company merged with Benny's Oil Service, which was operated by Benny Gilinato. At the time of the merger, Franklin Petroleum was the oldest oil service company in town, but Fred Glover, who owned Franklin Petroleum, stated that the problems of the time had made it necessary to seek assistance in order to provide complete service to customers. Since Benny's oil service was equipped with the finest equipment and had a large capacity of oil storage, Mr. Glover felt that it would make sense to complete this merger. Helen's Sub Shop In September of 1967, Helen's Sub Shop opened on the corner of East Central Street and Cottage Street. They offered a full line of submarine sandwiches. The Glen Meadows Apartment Complex In October of 1967, the developer of Franklin Shoppers Fair on East Central Street revealed his plans for a $3 million medium to luxury garden apartment complex to the rear of the shopping center. This complex would contain 279 garden type apartments divided among nine compounds with three buildings and 31 apartments in each compound. The Klein Innsbruck skiing area. In February of 1968, a new ski lodge was nearing completion. Klein Innsbruck Ski Lodge on Washington Street, which was near the Bellingham Line, would open for skiing, and a few weeks later, the snack bar and all of its facilities would be open for business. The ski lift propelled skiers to the peak of the highest slope, and the Prudential Center in Boston could be seen, as well as a panoramic view of the surrounding towns. And that concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching.